One, yeah, I find it beautiful. <clears throat> That's me. My musical tastes. Um, could you turn, maybe pull the red slide down a little bit? Uh, there we go. My musical tastes are extremely eclectic, okay? I, I like some of all sorts of stuff. Uh, not into country too much. But I love Gregorian chant. Gregorian Chorale, and uh, that song that we sing as a hit Christmas carol all the time, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, started as a Gregorian chant, okay? And um, it was originally sung in um, Gregorian chant and in Latin, okay? And, and um, I thought I'd treat you to uh, the song in its sort of uh, original form. Even, but they have modernized it a little bit. But uh, I just find uh, such things uh, very, very beautiful. And I also gave you the song <coughs> because I'm using it as a springboard into the word this morning. O come, O come, Emmanuel. And uh, the last uh, two weeks, I guess, I find myself uh, preaching Christmas carols. Um, but with this time, uh, the Lord is speaking to my heart and uh, as I put it together, and uh, I hope and pray that he speaks to yours also. The song, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. <coughs> it, it was sung of, of, of Israel mourning and crying out for the Messiah to come and, and save them while they were in the Babylonian captivity. Okay, you know, when, when uh, Nebuchadnezzar came to Israel and and took thousands of them um, as slaves into Egypt, excuse me, into Babylon. And uh, in the time of Jeremiah, Daniel, the book of Daniel, Daniel was one of the, the Israeli captives. And uh, you get that first verse that says, O come, O come, Emmanuel. That's, that's, that's a cry for the Messiah. Emmanuel means God with us. And ransom captive Israel that mourns in lowly exile. You see, Israel was in exile, exile here, until the Son of God appeared. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to you. And as I was listening to this song earlier this week, the Lord started speaking to my heart that it is the cry, that it should be the cry of our hearts. Now, O come, O come, Emmanuel. You know, we are told to pray, uh, come Lord Jesus. And we need him for a number of reasons, and I will try to be quick as I go through these reasons. We need him to come, not just to uh, be the, the Messiah that comes to bring salvation, but we need, to, we need him to come as Lord. We need, to, we need him to come because Humanity is horribly divided. You know, it breaks my heart. To see these things. You know, and it's another verse 
of the song. O come, desire of nations, come. And in one of the, excuse me, O come, desire of nations, bind in one the hearts of all mankind. O bid our sad divisions cease and be yourself our king of peace. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel, and shall come to you. Come, desire of nations, come, nations bind in, in, in one the hearts of all mankind. You know, um, scripture would say it like this in Titus chapter 3. At one time, we too were foolish, disobedient, deceived, and enslaved by all kinds of passions and desires. We, we lived in malice and envy, being hated and, and, hate, and hating one another. But when the kindness and love of God, our Savior, appeared, He saved us. He saved us. There is too much cruelty around the world. You know, and we see it all the time and uh, I guess sometimes we become desensitized to it all. Because, you know, you, you see uh, um, people slaughtering one another, uh, Muslims killing Christians, uh, especially in Africa. We see the thing in, um, that has been on the news recently about uh, in Syria, how they uh, uh, slaughtering the people in Aleppo. <coughs> you see, man's inhumanity to man, and it, it breaks my heart. You know, I was watching <coughs> on Facebook the other day, and people are posting videos of people getting into fights. Okay, street fights. And um, everybody's got a video camera these days because it's on your phone. And uh, people get into a fight on the on the bus, on the train, in, in Walmart. And, and uh, I wish they stopped it on on social media. But it only strikes my heart more and more as how terrible we are to one another. Man's inhumanity to man. There's too much hatred and violence. The division, the division. Nowadays, uh, as, as of uh, recently, part of the division has been uh, Democrats versus Republicans. And uh, if you voted for Trump, you're a this and you're a that and you're no good, you're a racist. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, it's just like a name calling and, and anger and hatred. Uh, and it needs to stop. Come on, Jesus. Come on, come, man, but we need you. We are in desperate need of the King of Peace. Another reason we need him to come, we need him to come because we need his rule, his rulership and dominion. Another verse helps to emphasize that. It says, O come, O come, our Lord of might, who to your tribes on Sinai's height 
in ancient times gave holy law and cloud and majesty and all. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to you, O Israel. You know, there was a time when God, when God's um, uh, law laid down and his rule was embraced, it was given in majesty and awe. And, and I think that's very cool how God did this thing of gathering people around the mountain and, and giving the law from there. It, it helped it to be not just rules, but, but the heart of God spoken in power and great authority. We need Jesus to come and establish his rule and his dominion. And what will that look like, Jesus establishing his rule and his dominion? Will it be, um, you know, um, uh, angels coming and they're all just chubby little babies? Like you see in the paintings? <laughs> you know, the, paint, the Christmas paintings, you know, um, um, as we were reading um, the, the scripture on the back of the bulletin, how they were, uh, the shepherds were out in the field keeping watch over the flocks by night, and suddenly the angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were terrified. Mm -hmm. And the angel said, uh, uh, Fear not. And I, I like that. Every time an angel appears to somebody, the first thing he says is, Don't freak out. <laughs> uh, fear not. Do not be afraid. I bring you great news of a great joy for today, born to you in the city of David, is a Savior, is Christ the Lord. And this shall be signed to you and find a baby wrapped in claws lying in your church. And suddenly, the sky was filled with a great company of the heavenly host, singing glory to God in the highest. And what do you think those angels look like? Were they, were they a, a great company, a, a great number of little chubby babies with wings? <laughs> like you see on the Christmas cards? No! They were singing soldiers. Says the, the heavenly host, the hosts of heaven. Um, uh, that's a, another word for heaven's armies. They were warriors. They were mighty angels. This was a big deal. Revelation chapter 19 helps, them, helps us to see the big deal. Verse 11. I saw heaven standing open, and there before me was a, a white horse whose rider is called Faithful and True. With, with, with justice, he judges and makes war. His eyes were, were like blazing fire, and on his head are many crowns. He has a name written on him that no one knows but he himself. He is dressed in a robe dipped in blood, and his name is the Word of God. The armies of heaven were following him, riding on white horses and dressed in fine linen, white and clean. Don't miss that. Dressed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth comes a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He treads the, rind, the wine press of the fury of the, of the wrath of God Almighty. And on his robe and on his thigh, he has this name written King of Kings and Lord of Lords. This is a tremendous.
tremendous picture. A tremendous picture. And it, it speaks of the Lord's return. And, and, and this time, as you can see, he's not coming as a newborn baby. Here, he's coming to forcibly impose his rule and dominion. Notice that in his coming, he judges and makes war that he strikes down the nations with the sword of his mouth, and that he rules them with an iron scepter. What does that mean, iron scepter? That means firm rulership. A scepter is a staff that, that the king would hold that is a symbol of his kingly authority. And, uh, this scepter is, is called an iron scepter. It, it means firm, firm rulership. And why is this necessary? Well, I want you to look, look at verse 15 right there with me again. Out of his mouth comes a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. He'll rule them with an iron scepter. And it goes on to say, he treads the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God. That speaks volumes. The fury of his wrath. Not, 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 not just that God is a little miffed with them. But the wrath is why the harsh judgment? And it is this simple. John chapter 3, verse 19. Now I'm giving you this from the Amplified Version. The basis of the judgment, the indictment, the test by which men are judged, the ground for the sentence lies in this. The light has come into the world. And people have loved darkness. Rather, rather than and more than the light. For, the, for their works and their deeds were evil. Jesus has come into the world the first time as a little baby. And, um, and then he grew up and uh, taught us. And uh, he showed us the heart of God, which was good, which was loving, and, and, and always trying to help and save. And, and he demonstrated the truth of what he was saying. He demonstrated the truth of who he was. And he demonstrated those things with the, what we call miracles. But again, I don't like to call them miracles. You've heard me say this before. I like to call them demonstrations of his authority. Every other quote unquote great philosopher, great teacher, they have a teaching. Jesus came and backed it up. Okay? When he said something, um, it sounded authoritative, and, and then he, he did something authoritative that people said, we, we have never seen it like this before. Okay? He backed up what he had to say in great authority to give his words validity. And then, On top of it all, he was the Lamb of God, born in Bethlehem, the place where they raised the special sacrificial lambs. K 
killed at the, the preparation time of Passover, right when you're supposed to kill and slaughter the Passover lamb. The symmetry is beautiful, it's perfect. Jesus, when he was anticipating going to the cross, he was in the Garden of Gethsemane. And he knew what was getting ready to come at him. And nobody likes pain. Nobody likes to get beat up and whipped and, and, and have nails punched through your body. Jesus said, Father, if you be that way, let this cup pass from me. However, but not my will, but yours. Yeah. Like anybody else, he wanted to avoid the discomfort, but he went through it. Nevertheless, not my will be done, but yours. And he laid down his life. And it wasn't just a quick two shots to the back of the head. Execution. It was being beaten, whipped, and then nailed to a cross where you hang your hand man for hours and suffocate. And he did all of this to buy our salvation. And then people said, there are people who say, eh, no thanks. I don't care. I'm asking you to die for me. Yeah, okay. All right. Um, that angers God. That angers the Lord. What did we just read? The basis of the judgment, the indictment, the test by which men are judged, the ground for the sin of this. Life has come to the world. That's everything I just talked about. Jesus come to die. And people, and people have loved darkness rather than and more than the light, since their works and deeds were evil. That's why he will come and impose his rulership. Now, as we read this thing in Revelation about um, um, Jesus coming back, and the, it says in verse uh, 14, the armies of heaven were following him, riding on white horses, dressed in fine linen, white and clean. Now, the Bible tells us that, the, that the white linen represents the righteousness of the saints. Okay? And white linen represents the white righteousness of the saints. Um, the church has been raptured by the time this happens. And um, that's where we fit into this picture. Um, for the saints come back with the Lord as a part of the armies of heaven. And you might say that this is a, uh, that you are, you can find yourself in the Bible. <coughs> so there you are. If you belong to Jesus, there will come a time when the dead in Christ shall rise first. We who are alive shall be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye and be caught up to be with the Lord again. And, and we're coming back. We're in verse 14. And he will establish his rule. And it will be a good thing. The last reason, I'm, well, not quite the last, but another reason I want to give you for why we need him to come and fill the earth with his, um, for why we need him to come, it, it is to come and fill the earth with his knowledge. 
We need Jesus to come and fill the earth with his knowledge. And that is reflected in another verse of the song. Oh, come our wisdom from on high, who ordered all things mightily, to ask to us the path of knowledge show and, and teach us in her ways to go. Rejoice, rejoice. Emmanuel shall come to you in his way. And I am, as I read this, what jumps out at me is to us the path of knowledge show and teach us in, our, in her ways to go. When the Lord imparts knowledge, it is a wonderful thing. It is not just like we go to school and learn something. It's much more than that. It is, it is imparting not stuff that he wants us to know, but imparting what he knows. I look this, this, I researched this word knowledge as it is used here in the scripture that I'm going to read. It is what God knows. I point you to Isaiah chapter 11, verse 6. We have the prophecy of the future concerning the Lord's coming, the Lord's kingdom on earth. It says, the wolf will live with the lamb. The leopard will lie down with the goat. The cat and the lion and the yearly together and a little child will leave them. And, and as it speaks of this, it speaks of wolf and lamb, predator and prey. Okay, it speaks of leopard and goat, predator and prey, a, a lamb, a calf and a lion. Predator and prey. And a little child leaving them. The cow will feed with the bear. Their young will lie down together. And the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the hole of the cobra, and the young child put his hand into the viper's nest. You know what a viper is? A viper is a poison snake. They will neither harm nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as waters cover the sea. That last sentence, verse 9, they will neither harm nor destroy in all my holy mountain. Why? For the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord. As the waters cover the sea. That's a, that, that's a magnificent picture. The knowledge of the Lord. And again, that's just not knowing about him, but it is it is knowing. It is having a great understanding of, of, of how things work and how things are supposed to be and, and who we are and who, who I am and who you are. You know what I mean? It is creation being restored, set free from futility. It is and it is the, the knowledge, the knowledge, again, it is what God knows. The knowledge of the Lord. And you notice that word Lord is on all capitals. That is, uh, that is the Almighty God. Um, when you see all capitals like that, um, that's the Tetragrammaton, uh, if you want to talk about the four Hebrew letters where we get the word Yahweh, Yah, Yahweh. It is, it is, it is the, 
the Holy One, the Almighty One, the Revered One. Okay, there's so much in those four capital letters. The earth will be full of the knowledge of this one. As the waters cover the sea, Knowledge refers to the knowledge that he possesses. <laughs> and when, when what he knows is imparted to everyone and everything, creation is set free from, from futility. And that's what this scripture is talking about. Um, the idea of how the animals um, chase one another down and kill and eat. The predator, the wolf, kills, kills the lion. When what he knows is imparted to everyone and everything, there should be peace among all living things. And this is what we pray for. When we pray, our Father, <coughs> which are in heaven, hallowed. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth just as it is in heaven. And that's what you see in the scripture. His will being done on earth just as it is in heaven. And the animals are there. They are there to, for God's glorification and his enjoyment. And nobody's hurting anybody. Little kid pick up a rattlesnake and, and play with it. It's amazing. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel. We need you. We need him to come and fill the earth with his knowledge. And lastly, we are glad that he came to be our Savior. Which is the, the last verse of the song that was given. <laughs> o come, O rod of Jesse's stem. The speaking of Jesus. From every foe deliver them. That trust your mighty power to save. Bring them in victory through the grave. <coughs> rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel. Has come to you, O Israel. Shall come to you. One of the things, one of the great, great, great benefits of, of knowing Jesus, not, not just that we have to get to have him in our lives, and he's our savior, and, and he's good to us, and, and uh, so on and so forth. But um, he says he saves us from our sins. He saves us from the consequences of our sins. He saves us, and when we die, we don't have to stay dead. I give you. First Corinthians chapter 15. But Paul is saying, when the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable, he's talking about these perishable bodies being clothed with one that will not perish. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written shall come true. Death has been swallowed in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin. And the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. He brings 
us in victory through the grave, as the song says. Because of our living faith in Him. Oh, our living faith in Him. I'm so thankful that I have a living faith, that I'm trusting Him, that uh, I have what well, the old hymn says, blessed assurance. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Do you have the blessed assurance? Uh, our God is an awesome God. That kind of goes with this. I wish I had thought about that earlier. Our God is an awesome God. That's, that's what the song says. The Lord wasn't joking when they kicked him out of the It wasn't for no reason that he shed his blood. His return is very soon. So you better be believing that our God is an awesome God. There's my last slide. Do you know him? I trust that everyone in here does. Know him as, as Lord and Savior because he's coming again. And he's not coming as a cute little baby. <coughs> he's coming with the armies of heaven with him. He's an awesome God. He's an awesome God. Pray with me. Lord, indeed, you are an awesome God. We thank you for what you've done. Lord, and we ask, come again. Come, Lord Jesus. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel. Bring your rulership and your dominion. Lord, establish your kingdom here on earth. Fill this earth with the knowledge of the Lord, just like the waters cover the sea. Thank you for coming as our Savior. Lord, and reach out and save every heart that would need you. Lord, we pray for our unsaved loved ones right now. Those who don't know you, Lord, to bring them to you. Thank you for the, the faith, the grace that uh, chases the unsaved. Lord, and, and, and Run after them, oh God, and bring them to you. We pray, we pray in Jesus' name. Oh, come, oh, come, man. I need you. We need you. And we thank you that we have you in our lives. We're thankful that you're coming again. Come, Lord Jesus. Pray all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And uh, let's gather towards the front. We're going to sing Silent Night. <laughs>